psychologist and the TV. Uh, it's another exciting time with me, Dr. Blessing and Tamu. And like I said, we are still on our series on developmental psychology. So we want to discuss a particular factor that affects prenatal development. There are several factors that affect prenatal development from exposure to psychoactive drugs, to our emotional state, to our, our food, our, our feeding, you know. Uh, a lot of factors are actually affect prenatal development. But today I've chosen to speak about a particular factor that is really very important that which I think everyone should know about. Now before I go further, what is prenatal development? When we talk about prenatal development, we are talking about the development of the fetus in the womb. So the development of the baby from conception to the point of delivery, that's prenatal development. Now, before I go on with the factor for today's discussion, if you're new to the Psychologist NG TV, kindly click on subscribe just beneath the video, no extra cost, so that you can be notified of all of our future videos. Okay, click on subscribe and also click on the notification sign and let's get along. Every day, every video is an opportunity to learn something quite important and something new. So today we are going to be talking about resource incompatibility. Resource incompatibility and what is resource incompatibility? It's a situation whereby there is an incompatibility between the resource factor of the mother and of the fetus in the womb. What is resource factor? Now if you've ever gone for a blood test and the result was given to you, you will see it being indicated there as um, either group blood group AB positive or negative, blood, blood group A positive, uh, A negative, B positive, B negative, blood group O, you know, positive, negative. So the positive or negative sign that's attached to your blood group, that's an indication of your resource factor. Now this was named after resource monkeys because this uh, protein, the resource factor refers to a particular protein, you know, that codes, okay, that's present in the red blood cells of um, organisms. And this was first discovered with resource monkeys, okay. So when you are, your blood group is written as blood group B positive, it means you're resource positive. That means you have this resource protein on your red blood cells, on the surface of your red blood cells, you have presence of this particular resource uh, protein, okay. So if your, your blood group is indicated as resource negative, this means an absence of that protein that's on the surface of your red blood cells. So we have resource positive and resource negative individuals, and the majority of individuals are actually resource positive. Now, but there are a few resource uh, negative individuals. Ordinarily, being resource positive or negative has no implication on our health. And the resource factor is also an inherited trait. So we inherit the resource factor also from our parents. Now, like I said, it has no implication on your health ordinarily. But if you're a woman and you become pregnant, then there's an implication of the resource factor on your baby. Okay? Now let's look at what the implication is. If you're resource negative and the father of your child, your unborn child, is resource positive, there is a 50% chance that the fetus in your womb might be resource positive. So you are resource negative. Your spouse or the father of your child is resource positive. If the baby, if the fetus is resource positive, then there will be an incompatibility, okay, because the fetus is resource positive and you are resource negative, the absence of protein, of that protein in your red blood cells. You have the absence of the protein, your baby has the presence of the protein. Like we know, our bodies produce antibodies to fight off every invader, intruder into our bodies. So when there's, anytime there's a foreign object or a foreign, yeah, uh, a foreign object in our system that the body considers a threat, the body will produce antibodies to fight off those foreign substances or foreign objects or whatever you want to call them. Now, the pre this resource positive blood in your fetus is considered by your body as a foreign object. So should the resource positive blood make any contact with your body cells, your body will begin to produce antibodies to destroy the red blood cells of the fetus because the red blood cells of the fetus is resource positive. It has the presence of that protein substance on the surface of the red blood cells and your body, it is, that is strange to your body. 
your own red blood cells are resource negative that proton is a foreign body to your body so your body will produce antibodies to fight and destroy the red blood cells of your fetus now if this is your first pregnancy and you are not resource sensitive being resource sensitive as a resource negative person is that your body has been in contact with resource positive blood and your body has begun to produce antibodies to fight off the resource positive blood when that has happened we say you're resource sensitive so if you're already resource sensitive and this is your first pregnancy that first baby can be affected by those antibodies there are consequences of resource incompatibility which we'll discuss later but if this is your first pregnancy and previously you have had no contact with resource positive blood then even if there's contact with resource positive blood with your baby's your fetus's blood you know your body will begin to produce antibodies but the quantity of these antibodies may not be sufficient to cause any major damage to that first pregnancy to that first baby so you can successfully have that baby however when once the antibodies begin to be produced they remain in your system and subsequent pregnancies with resource positive fetuses will be highly at risk i hope you're following me through so if this is your first baby and you've had contact with resource positive blood in the past then there are already antibodies that have been produced and they might be produced sufficiently so in your first pregnancy it can also affect you and destroy the red blood cells of the fetus enough to cause a problem however if you had not had any contact with resource positive blood and this is the first time you have in contact with resource positive blood when you have a fetus that's resource positive inside you even though antibodies are going to begin to be produced they will not yet be sufficient to cause major damage to your baby so your baby may be born with mild symptoms be born healthy and survive healthy now how can you come in contact with resource positive blood aside from a pregnancy with resource positive baby now if you've had a miscarriage previously it's possible that during that pregnancy and miscarriage process you might have had contact with resource positive blood and your body had already started producing the antibodies to fight resource positive blood so we say you're already resource sensitive now also if you've had a blood transfusion with resource positive blood in the past then you're already resource sensitive and even your first pregnancy can be affected by resource incompatibility if you're not resource sensitive then your first pregnancy may be safe but subsequent pregnancies with resource positive fetuses will be affected I hope you're following me I hope you're following me I hope you're getting this right now let's see what actually happens when there's resource incompatibility that is when the mother is resource negative and the fetus in the womb is resource positive we've come as far as saying that when once there's contact between the baby's blood and the mother's blood the body will start producing um, antibodies to destroy those red blood cells okay now we know that red blood cells are the vehicle through which the body transports oxygen to other parts of the body so when there's continuous destruction of the red blood cells there will be insufficient red blood cells to transport oxygen to the parts of the body now this is known as hemolytic anemia so your fetus can have hemolytic anemia and your baby can be born with hemolytic anemia okay and like i said there are mild cases and there are severe cases okay in mild cases the baby can be born jaundiced that's the yellowing of the skin and the yellowing of the white area of the eyes the baby can be born jaundiced the baby can have low muscle tone your baby, your baby can also have lethargy and like i said it can be treated it can be treated by if it's a mild case there might be no need to even transfuse the baby with blood okay so it can be treated by phototherapy exposing the baby to sunlight or to light food therapy in the lab whatever it can be treated by providing um, some fluids to the baby it can be treated using iron tablets and there are other kinds of treatments your doctor will determine which is best for your baby depending on the circumstance okay now in severe cases as uh, the, the red blood cells are continuously being destroyed there's hemolytic anemia like i said the heart is under pressure because there's insufficient blood to transport oxygen to all the parts of the body so the heart has to beat faster to ensure that oxygen reaches other parts of the body 
when the weight, when the, 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 the stress becomes too much for the heart, there can be a heart failure in the fetus while it's still in the womb. So when there's a heart failure, there will be buildup of fluids in part of the baby's body. So the baby can be born with fluids built up in parts of his body. Okay, so this, it can also be, there might also be brain damage. The baby can be born with brain damage. There can also be um, mental disorders. Okay, the baby can be born with um, speech and hearing defects. Okay, and also in very severe cases, it could be fatal. Baby can be born, die at birth, they can be still birth, you know, the baby can die from this condition. That is why this condition is really, really um, uh, important that we, we are aware and that if you are restless negative, even before you get conceived, you should know the restless factor of your spouse and then you should take measures, you know, before, during pregnancy to ensure that no negative consequences are suffered by your, your baby because of restless incompatibility. Yeah, so we said there can be mild cases that can be treated with phototherapy, uh, with uh, drugs, with uh, hydrolytes, with uh, uh, you know fluids and all of that. And when you have severe cases, there needs to be a blood transfusion to the fetus. If whilst it's in the womb or maybe after birth, there can be an uh, induction of labor to ensure that baby comes up faster and that it can treat this hemolytic uh, anemia faster so that the baby lives and does not suffer too many negative consequences. Okay. And like we said, it can lead to heart failure, that can lead to fleets build up, it can lead to uh, uh, mental disorders, uh, disorders with hearing and uh, speech, hearing and speech defects, and also lead to uh, brain damage. So that's how serious it can be. Now, in uh, the modern day society, resource factor is actually something that can be dealt with. I mean, in the past, it was something people were not even informed about, you know, so especially in our parts of the world, when you had, uh, uh, situations because of restless incompatibility, it was you know attributed to witchcraft or some some superstitious belief and some shenanigans like that. But in the present day, in uh, countries where they have good medical care, restless incompatibility is no longer a huge problem. Why is this? This is because there's treatment for restless incompatibility. So there's an injection known as restless immune globulin. They can be given to the restless negative mother to prevent her body from producing antibodies to fight the restless positive blood. However, the time of administration of this injection is very important. If this injection is administered after the body of the mother has already started producing the antibodies to fight the restless positive blood, then that injection will be ineffective. So if the mother is already restless sensitive and her body has already started producing the antibodies, the injection will be ineffective. However, if it's given to her whenever there's a risk of um, exposure to restless positive blood before exposure and before her body starts producing the antibodies, that can help the situation. And it's usually given severally each time there is a need. Now, in a situation where the baby is already, the mother is already baby, uh, restless sensitive, pardon me, in a situation where the mother is already restless sensitive and there's already presence of restless um, antibodies in her system, the fetus can also be treated against restless incompatibility, both whilst it's still in the womb and after delivery. However, if you are not sent, if you do not know about these things, how can you prevent the negative consequences? That's exactly why I've done this video for you. So please know your blood type, know your restless factor, know your spouse's blood type and restless factor. And if you're restless negative, it means you have some work to do. You have to ensure that before and during pregnancy, you take uh, adequate measures to, uh, to ensure that your baby does not suffer negative consequences from restless incompatibility. Like we said, it could even lead to death of the fetus or of the baby. I'm sure you don't want that. So let's do the needful. And this is how far we are going to go today. And I understand that uh, this can be a little complex uh, with all of the professional jargons and all of that. So if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'm going to be willing to answer your questions. Okay, leave your comments, leave your questions, like the video. And if you're yet to subscribe to The Psychologist NGTV, this is the very right time to do so. Just click on the word subscribe beneath the video, no extra cost. And let's continue to learn together. Share the video with those that need to learn about them. 
Also, follow me on Instagram at the psychologist ng. I want to interact with you more closely, and also on Twitter at the psychologist ng. It's always a pleasure to be with you on the psychologist ng TV. And until the next video, where we learn something new and have a nice time together, have yourself a very beautiful day, and see you. Much love from me to you. Bye.